Right then, uh, this is feedback on the data response um, that I put in the library this time, yeah, which is um, this one on plastic, um, you know, plastic bags. Um, so um, this one was an old AS one. Um, is uh, I don't think it's the greatest. Uh, I don't think it's greatest uh, data response in the world, um, but um, but ne nevertheless, it, it covers some of the key concepts. Yeah, that yeah um, that you need to understand uh, from the early part of year twelve. Yeah. So um, if we take each question, you know, if we take questions one by one. Yeah, so the first one was um, the first one was using mathematical examples. Explain why the five p charge will hit the poorest harder as essentially their weekly income. So you just need to come up with some some very simple um, mathematical example. So the point obviously is that um, you know, I mean, the, the first point is um, that if you take um, a rich household, they'll be spending you know a smaller proportion of their income. Um, yeah, than than a, than a poor household. Yeah. So what we need is something. You know, what we need is something something along these lines, where we say, well, let's suppose. Yeah, you know, let's suppose. You know, let's suppose we've got a rich, rich family. Yeah. Um, and let's suppose that their let's suppose their weekly income um, is ten thousand pounds because they're very rich. Let's suppose they spend one thousand pounds of that. Yeah. Um, and on that they buy say ten plastic bags. Yeah. Um, ten plastic bags. Yeah. Um, is then going to cost them 50p. You know, 50p out of 10,000 um, <laughs> is some very small percentage. Um, let's suppose, yeah, you can work it out, I can't be bored, yeah. Um, let's suppose we have a very poor family, you know, who have, you know, who have, you know, an income of, um, you know, 50 pounds a week. They spend 50 pounds a week on that. Let's suppose they buy 10 plastic bags for 50p. And obviously that's getting much closer. That's that's a much higher proportion of their income. Yeah, that's like um, yeah, that's obviously one percent. So it's something like that. Yeah, and again, it's that idea that you know, it's it's that idea that um, it's it's a combination of the idea that you know, low income groups have a higher marginal propensity to consume in the first place. Yeah, um, but that you know, a certain amount of you know, money on expenditure, expenditure on plastic bags is just a small percentage of, of a big number. So it's not particularly difficult. Um, with reference to lines five to seven, um, was B draw supply curve for the production of plastic bags. Yeah, so if we look at you know, if we look at lines five to seven, lines five to seven say um, the largely automated processes um, of industrial manufacturing these days means that price elasticity supply is almost perfectly elastic. Fine. So it doesn't really matter whether you make it almost or completely perfectly elastic. Personally, I'd say, well, look, there's quantity, there's price. Their supply is essentially perfectly elastic. And the reason is we know that supply is marginal cost. So to get your fourth mark, what you need to do is to relate back to this idea of you know, um, a largely automated process you know, um, of industrial manufacturing. That's the point. You know, so therefore, you can just knock out each plastic bag one after the other, after the other, after the other. You don't face diminishing returns. That's the argument. Yeah? So, so essentially, because you know, each one isn't costing more than one before, um, marginal cost is horizontal, and therefore supply is perfectly elastic. Yeah, which means that you know that essentially um, you don't need an increase in price um, to supply any more bags than you did before. And um, third one um, is consider consider whether the price elasticity of demand for plastic bags is likely to be elastic or inelastic. And in a lot of the answers that I saw, um, there wasn't really there wasn't really very much of um, of, of considering going on here. Yeah? <laughs> So what, what people tended to do is they said, well, look, price elasticity of demand is the responsiveness of demand to change in price. And then they looked at the evidence and they said that, you know, in Wales, carrier bag use dropped by 71%. Um, in Ireland, it dropped by 90% and blah, 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 blah. Therefore, demand is responding more than proportionally to a change in price. Therefore, demand is price elastic. Well, OK, that's fine. Um, but that's not a consideration. That's not a discussion. Yeah. Um, so, you know, is it going to be the same in the long term? You know, so, so uh, you know, is, is it maybe that there's just an initial shock as people are charged for plastic bags? Yeah. And then, um, yeah. Uh, and then after a bit, they're going to they're going to revert or you know, I don't really know. I mean, the, the, the point is, yeah, the, the point is that it doesn't have to be. And what I would also do is anchor it back to some of the factors. Yeah. So you could argue. I mean, this is one where the in theory, in practice bit might work. In theory, plastic bags might be price inelastic because it's a small percentage of income, blah, 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 blah. In reality, um, you know, there are big changes as shown by the data because, I mean, technically it's an infinite percentage change. Actually, you go from three to 5p. I don't know. Yeah, so, so the, the, there's, there's various things that are going on there. It doesn't matter too much what you say, but what you do need to do is to make sure that you evaluate. Um, 
The next one was using a welfare loss diagram and with reference to the data, explain how the consumption of plastic bags can lead to market failure. I think, I think that you know, there are a variety of diagrams. I think that the right diagram, you know, the right diagram you know, here that we need to be doing is we've got to have quantity, we've got to have cost and benefits like that. You know, then we've got to have you know, demand, which is marginal private benefit. Um, supply, which we're going to say is marginal private cost and marginal social cost. Yeah? But what's, and then quite a few of you managed to get that marginal social benefit there, where that's the external cost. And, and you went, well, that's the equilibrium, which is where supply equals demand. Yeah. Um, that's the socially optimum level, yeah, which is where marginal social cost equals marginal social benefit. That's the welfare loss. But what then people kind of go, there's some sort of weird kind of, that's, when you come to explain the welfare loss, you're not explaining it right. You're just kind of going, you know, marginal private benefit is more than marginal social benefit or something. The point about the welfare loss is it's the gap between, always, is the gap between marginal social benefit and marginal social cost. That's, that's the key every single time. So what we're saying is, why is that the welfare loss? Because in each case, that's the marginal social cost, that's the marginal social benefit. That's the marginal social cost, that's the marginal social benefit. For this unit, that's the marginal social cost, that's the marginal social benefit. So for every one of those ones, the marginal social cost is more than the marginal social benefit. What about these plastic bags? Are these not problematic? No, because although they have external costs, yeah, it's still worthwhile grandma being able to carry her fruit home. <laughs> yeah, so on these ones, the marginal social benefit is greater than the marginal social cost. So even though these plastic bags kill fish and turtles too, we don't care, yeah, because these ones are adding to welfare overall. Hello, you all right? Hi, I'm yeah. Water yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so generally people did okay there, yeah, but you're not explaining the welfare loss properly. Yeah? When, he's, when he's explaining welfare loss, it's always got to be to do with social benefit, social cost. Yeah? Most of you are saying either marginal social cost is greater than marginal private cost, or marginal private benefit is greater than marginal social benefit, something like that. You're not comparing the benefit with the cost. Um, the fifth one then was discuss the extent to which the 5p charge on plastic bags could be considered to be an example of government failure. So this is one of my yeah, this is one of my pet subjects, as a lot of you will know, in the sense that you know people just shunter on about government failure without really explaining what it is. So for me, I think to do well, you've got to relate back to this idea that government failure, it's a misallocation of resources. Oops. It's not sounding good for my cell though. Yeah, <laughs> it's a it's a mis it's a misalloc it's a misallocation of resources, obviously, yeah, caused by yeah caused by government caused by government intervention. <laughs> I better not hit this too hard. Um, caused by government intervention, resulting yeah in a welfare loss. In other words, it's the same as market failure, but caused by the government. So, are plastic bags is the five p plastic bag tax an example of government failure? On the one hand, no, because it corrects the market failure. You could then just adapt your previous diagram, yeah, where you had, yeah, where we had, yeah, we had marginal social benefit, marginal private benefit. In this case, we can kind of go, so there's your supply of plastic bags, yeah, da, 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 da. yeah there, um, supply equals marginal private cost, marginal social cost. Yeah, and you can kind of go, right, okay, fine. Yeah, um, yeah so uh, no, no, we need it to be zero to start with. Don't we? Ah, yeah, so, um, Actually, yeah, we should, what we should probably say is that you know, our, our problem originally yeah, is that you know, there is marginal private benefit equals demand. There's marginal social benefit. And what we're saying, yeah, hmm, this doesn't quite work, does it? That's a bit weird. No, oh, well, anyway, um, we're, we're consuming them up to that point you know, where marginal utility equals zero yeah, because, yeah, because we consume them up until they're free. But presumably, presumably they do have some sort of marginal private cost. Hmm. So it's worse. So, so we could we could actually kind of go well. Look, there's supply equals marginal private cost, but that's ignored because we're giving away for free. Oh, uh, anyway, screw it. Yeah, <laughs> um, I haven't got time here. Um, essentially, you're driving up the price, reducing demand closer to the socially optimum level. Yeah, that, that that's the point. So, on the one hand, it's not government failure. Yeah, because we need the five B tax. Yeah, to correct the market failure. If they get it at the right level, then you know all the birds are singing in the trees. Again, you know, God's in his heaven, all that type of stuff. Yeah, and the um, the welfare loss will be eliminated because of the internalisation, the externality. We're making the polluter pay. We're making the consumer pay for bags. So why might it be government failure? 
obviously calculating the size of the um, calculating the size of the tax yeah can be problematic you know, so it's very easy to get that wrong but more importantly is again going back to the data yeah in the data it says you know, um, plastic bags might not actually be the best option studies show that paper bags create you know greater landfill waste than plastic bags so if we stop people using plastic bags and then they all use paper bags that's worse and reusable cotton bags would need to be used 131 times or something yeah and they're full of disease so Therefore, there's a danger actually that by driving consumers away you know, um, to, to these alternatives, which, which are potentially worse to the environment, the government has actually made a worse misallocation of resources. Overall, what do we think? Probably not. Yeah, we know that there's huge. You know, we know that plastic creates huge problems, you know, um, and therefore trying to do something probably makes sense. Nevertheless, there are some there are some side effects. So again, it's coming to that final conclusion. Um, and then finally, um, finally, F. This, this one's not to do with the data, it's a more abstract question. To what extent are tradable pollution permits effective at reducing environmental damage within a country? So I think what was going on here is people people missed the key point about tradable pollution permits. Yeah? So there are lots of arguments for and against and they were okay. But the key point about tradable pollution permits is that any firm any firm has a choice at any at any given point, yeah. Um, it can either decrease pollution or it can buy permits. Those, those are its options, yeah. So what sort of firms are going to decrease pollution? Why, why not just buy permits? The sort of firms that are going to decrease pollution yeah, are the ones yeah, that find it easy to decrease pollution. They can do so at very low cost. That's why they're going to do it, yeah. So in a tradable, in a tradable, in a tradable pollution system, yeah, then what's going to happen yeah, is that the firms that find it really easy to reduce pollution will do so. And then they will sell their, they, they will then have surplus permits that will sell to firms you know, that find it difficult to reduce pollution, you know, who, who, who will then want to buy them. So, what, so if you just had a system where the government imposed quotas, what would happen is that everybody would have to reduce pollution. Those who find it easy and those who find it difficult. That's not very efficient. In a tradable pollution permit system, what happens is that those who find it easy to reduce pollution are the ones that do it. Those that find it difficult, yeah, don't. And therefore, from a socially efficient point of view, we reduce pollution in the most socially efficient way. Because obviously reducing pollution costs resources, and we want to use as few resources as we possibly can to reduce that pollution. That's the idea behind them. Your evaluations are generally quite good, and you also kind of chunted on about the idea that, well, kind of reducing it within a country isn't necessarily key, yeah, because it's going to drive producers overseas to other countries and so on and so forth. Yeah, but that was the key that I thought that people didn't really get across here, yeah? plus the idea that because we yeah, because we have permits, every firm in the every firm in the market has an incentive to cut pollution. Either you want to cut pollution so you can sell permits, or you can cut pollution so you don't have to buy permits, but it incentivizes everybody within that market. Yeah. So um so that was that one. Um generally quite well done, I thought. Um but you know, this one I think showed whether people really knew what things like market failure, government failure, elasticity, and so on were. Yeah, so um if you weren't sure, um then um get revising. Um Something else coming up in the library this week. I think it's SA week this time, so I'll stick something up on Monday. Um, hope this has been useful. Um, see you soon.